Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We're joined by Chris Harrison and uh, Tim Alexander still here. Uh, Chris, let's summarize the reports of what you've uh, posted up today on Fukushima, the WIP reactor, the seismic testing, uh, the NRC with started with Jasco before he was removed from his position. So what's the latest? Well, I thought that I just started talking with Tim. I thought the, the most important article that I've read today, I think that was uh, courtesy of uh, John Stokes' uh, info, is that, uh, was that uh, the U.S. taxpayers, oh, it looks like there's an agreement for us to shoulder the burden of cleaning up Fukushima. And I did send you that article. And I, the U.S. I'm used kind of, <clears throat> Yeah, I see that. It says U.S. taxpayers may end up paying for Fukushima disaster. Yeah, we're in the tailpipe of this mess, aren't we? Yeah, but also, uh, you know, uh, what well, I mean, right now it's it's kind of late, you know, in the, in the game. And all of a sudden, now they're going to want more money, and they're going to go ahead and squeeze the American public for it. There's supposedly an agreement. Now, I didn't dig into it and verify and confirm uh, that there's, uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, how you know how the uh, how this works and everything else, but that's the only article I read. I said, you know, I'm, I'm appalled that uh, that now, now after the fact, way after the fact, when it's going to cost so much more money, when uh, an ounce of prevention could have could have uh, prevented a lot of this. Uh, I, I, I'm going to uh, invent a new word in the English language. I'm going to be call uh, say this. I am unsurprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unsurprised too, but and I'm just going to yeah. say that it, I am unsurprised. It, it, I am un- unbewildered. How's that? Another word. Yeah, yeah I'm unimpressed <laughs> either by this. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Guys, but, but, you know, uh, since we're going to be mm-hmm. printing all these trillions of dollars, and, of course, they, they're going to be worthless pretty soon, could they just kind of ship a billion my way? I mean, even for, you know, six months or so, I could probably have a lot of fun with a billion dollars. And well, it's just I, remember a talking, the I, I had a friend of mine in the Hungarian Revolution that left in 1968, and he smuggled across the border. And he was pretty athletic. He was involved as a, as a wrestler in, in Hungary. And he told me how uh, the money became so valueless, just like the Weimar Republic of Germany, that they would wallpaper their outhouses because it was high-quality paper for the money. But it was worthless for anything other than that. And, and, of course, the colors were so bizarre, you'd only wallpaper their outhouses. You wouldn't put it in your house unless you had a really poor sense of taste. Uh, you know, high-quality paper, but bad design. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that. Mm. No way. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, you know. So, so well, uh, unfair. Let, let, <clears throat> it, it's unfair. I mean, you're, you're looking at somebody making an agreement on my behalf, and I, I'm not agreeing to, to pay for all this, you know. And, uh, well, you know, now, now they know that, you know, they know who's boss, I guess, or they, they, they want us to think that that's the way. And sure, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll re- usurp some of their funding and go ahead and uh, use it to, uh, do the other the other work that needs to be done. So, I, like I said, I, I'm appalled by it. Anyway, I know you're unsurprised. Yeah. So let, let's go through all the news. It says uh, TV trouble reported near ice wall. Now, last week we got an ENE news again. Tell us what ENE news said out of our report on the ice wall, because I mentioned about the idea using starlight, which is a compound that was invented in the 70s, could tolerate 16,000 degrees. They could make pylons and divert the water away from above the site, but you don't want to put anything near Fukushima Daiichi. The only thing you want to do is build a seawall below and then pump that water below that's lending up underneath there, going through the, the ground water, actually through the seafloor, and get it because it bubbles up for these steam jets, tritiated steam jets. And you want to take that water and then filter it with a proper system, not the ALP system that's useless. And by the way, the same people that designed the ALPs, and we, you found this out, uh, right. Chris. Yeah. The same people. I mean, this is this is like SNL Saturday Night Live. The same people were involved with making <clears throat> the uh, kitty litter decision to make green kitty litter divided divided by the crazy green idiots at the Department of Energy. So they have green kitty litter that turns these uh, waste containers at sites like the WIP reactor site in Carlsbad, but also at Hanford and possibly other sites. We don't know because they won't. It's really hard to dig around and find out just how bad these idiots spread this. But they turned them into bombs, and we found also that the criticality of having a hydrogen explosion can cause the plutonium to cause a critical reaction in a nuclear explosion. So, if one, say, of twenty or thirty of these containers blows, it's going to cause possibly a nuclear explosion. It'll blow the heck out of the rest of them. It's not surprising. Whip blew up. It's only a matter of time before Hanford and other sites blow up too. 
Uh, yeah, so that's, what, uh, you know, and also, I, I guess uh, one one other report on there was some, uh, was uh, it's unverified on my, my end of it, but uh, he doubts that the waste stored in that in that pod was low-level waste. It was more, well, from, from <laughs> judging from what we see now, if it's, if it's higher-level waste and maybe fissionable product, we've got a big problem, just, just like we talked about before. I guess exactly. the CNE news, getting back to that, was... Uh, uh, cited our discussion of last week was uh, concerning uh, one, of, one of my colleagues who uh, I, I, I relayed what he, what he pretty much told me to, and he called us with that uh, uh, the, the thought of using an ice wall. And, and right now, that's, it's almost like a self-limiting problem. Like they cannot <coughs> form an ice plug at this point, which means, I mean, it's, you've got to think it's a real Goliath task trying to Freeze a great big section of the Earth. Well, it's in, it's one. It's apparently one point four kilometers long. It's not like a little one around, us, say, uh, an old, uh, you know, slag. We call slag from a coal mine, which is usually a very temporary procedure. This is something you want to do long term. Plus, it'll increase the water level, make the soil and the land around it thixotropic, cause more subsidence, more likely the buildings will just fall over, increases the structural stresses on the buildings. I just think it's. Right. It's beyond insane. It's like uh, the people who are doing this must have radiation cerebritis. Their brains are on fire with nuclear isotopes and and uh, radiation-induced astrocyte sickness. So God knows. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, I mean, they're going to need more. Let's put it this way. If they want this to be successful, it's not powerful enough. In other words, they can't remove enough heat to stop the flowing water and then turn it into a solid, you know, by freezing it. It just it's not going to work, and and then even if it does if it does form a freeze flood, well then on the other hand you'll get just like you said sinkholes and and the fixed right. tropic soil and and all yeah. the other all the other problems that it, that would create. Right. So in Unit Four, they removed 1,078 fuel rod assemblies, so they're proceeding, but they're getting into more difficult ones. And you mentioned also here in your report that they're uh, the common cool pool, cooling pool. They're moving now to Unit. Six. If you remember, unit five and six reactors were still intact, but they turned them off. Uh, five and six. There were six reactors there, uh, including, by the way, reactor that was it was a MOX reactor, reactor three that was actually making plutonium pellets for nuclear detonators. It was an an illegal nuclear weapons <coughs> generation plutonium pellet, uh, which is basically detonators for nuclear weapons facility. Uh, the other thing that's going on, I remember taking care of a gentleman by the name of Fairly Mowat. And he wrote a book many years ago called uh, Sea of Slaughter. And it was about the abnormal draggers and the abnormal fishing practices in the North Atlantic that destroyed the fisheries, which caused the fisheries to collapse. But what we now have is a collapse of life forms. And there's a number of articles over at Rents.com, because Rents has probably done more work than anybody in collecting articles on all these different things. I'm one step away, by the way, from having my site up as the Gamma uh, Radiation Testing Site for Vista, California, which will measure seven miles in in North County, San Diego, just below Pendleton Marine Corps Base at around 11, 1,200 feet uh, elevation, because we're up on the side of a mountain, seven miles in, there's mountains around here, blue granite mountains. Second hardest rock, by the way, in the world. The second hardest is in Scotland. And uh, uh, the uh, it'll measure gamma. It's only not going to measure the others, it'll just measure gamma. But gamma is what you want, and it'll, it'll measure gamma because it's very important to monitor things like cesium. Cesium is a big bad boy. Uh, it will not measure strontium because it's a beta emitter, and uh, unless you get a lot of it, <clears throat> you're not going to pick up beta emitters unless you bring it right over by the... But gamma will go right to the front screen of this device. If your count's going up in gamma, it means you're getting a surge of real nasty radioisotopes. Uh, plutonium, which is a gamma emitter, <clears throat> cesium-137, these are nasty, nasty. Uh, concentrates in glands, causes cardiac arrhythmias, destroys brain tissue, all the glands in your body. Nasty stuff. Back in a moment. Welcome back. Uh, I'll be on the second hour as a guest tonight on uh, on Rents Network. I'll show you I'm every Thursday night, usually second hour. Sometimes on the second week, I'm in the third hour. Uh, and uh, we always spend quite a bit of time on Fukushima, on the WIP reactor, and on the NRC report by JASCO that started to look at seismic reports and the danger of loss of control of the corium and in the reactor core of nuclear reactors in America because of extreme weather, but especially seismic events, uh, checking the structural integrity of the reactors to be able to withstand these. And uh, so far, they're burying it with studies on studies. 
Uh, any new news on what's happening from JASCO's uh, initiated uh, process? Is there anything at all coming out to tell us which reactors have failed the test? Because uh, I know you had one, you posted up on the, on the site, uh, Chris, that looked like it was uh, not doing so good. We had another report of one of the reactor sites that's having troubles. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to talk about this. Uh, I think it was a Calhoun, uh, right? With these sandbags yeah, being that's filled. exactly the one. I was expecting <clears throat> you to hone right in on that. Yeah, uh, for Calhoun, yeah. I was surprised to see that. And that's the plant that uh, a couple of years ago in 2011 was shut down for for two years. <clears throat> and then now it's running again, and it looks like the floodwaters are rising in the Missouri River and a couple of the other tributaries. Yeah, some of these aren't even like taking, sites of of nuclear reactions uh, that are in danger of seismic, and it's just because the flood plane is higher than even the diesel generators to back up the power. It's stupid design in where they put them. Uh, and they're designed to be in, in, in tornado zones, or the, the flood water, li water line is literally above the intake of the diesel generators, so it's going to flood them, and they're going to turn off. They are sandbagging uh, preemptively right now. So they're actually building sandbag walls, and I showed you that, that video. Uh, that was uh, courtesy simplyinfo uh, org, and so yeah, uh, yeah, that, and it was uh, yeah, like I said. You know, I was, how uh, many of the, the big question, question is how many reactors have failed the test in terms of seismic testing, which they're supposed to have had all the data out by now. It's a couple months. Which reactors failed? Well, the ones that I've seen, they, they all have something to do. They all failed, in my, my opinion. There's not, there's in no, other words, there's it, in, in other words, all the reactors, like the Ebro Canyon in California, all the reactors sitting near uh, near the New Madrid fault system, and there's fault lines all over America. It turns out that many of the reactors are on coastal areas or on rivers. There's, I would say, just as a ballpark, half of the reactors in America are sitting near a fault zone where they can be struck. Half. And a number of other ones are in additional extreme weather, or they're literally designed below the high water mark so the water can flood out the diesel generator so there's no backup power. Guys, you realize if, if we do get into, uh, if not tomorrow, five years down the road, whenever, God knows I don't, uh, World War III, uh, how are you? What's going to happen if uh, you, you have EMP weapons going off, so you lose uh, your your grids all over the country? Uh, you have bio war. You have radiation from atomic blast. Uh, you're not going to be able to service all these reactors. Well, They're even going if you could get even if you have Fukushima's the, everywhere. Exactly. Even if you could service them by getting in flying in giant heavy lift helicopters, diesel fuel. Number one, the diesel generators have to have to be working, which they tend to fail. And number two, you have to be able to continuously get that material in. If the freeways are jammed up, because cars have been hit by EMP, so the freeways are all gone, you have to fly it with heavy lift helicopters. You have to have an attack military that can actually do that. Can they, uh, can they appropriate the military forces and heavy lift helicopters to actually service these reactors? Because we can have an entire rash of reactors, even if they're not physically, structurally destroyed, that they lose their backup power that will eventually go uh, Fukushima. So <clears throat> I think we're literally sitting on, it's like, say, let's put it this way, it's like having grenades underneath the cushions of your, of your living room chairs while you're watching movies, and someone moves the wrong way and the pin slides up. Whoops. Mm -hmm. It's like, Whoops. that's not wise. So, uh, Chris, that's, that's that issue. The other thing is what's happening at WIP and at Hanford. Anything new there? I don't have much new information other than uh, what we, we discussed before, that, that uh, one scientist who claims that uh, maybe, the, maybe the level of waste that's stored in those drums, especially that exploded, is actually high, high level waste instead of low level waste. So we're right. Uh, high level means it's a fissionable, or, or fissionable material that. Right. Uh, uh, americium, uh, plutonium, very, in other words, these are gamma emitters that can induce a critical reaction. They can actually create a critical reaction in a nuclear explosion. The gamma emitters are neutron emitters, right? Uh, no, g gamma, gamma is. Uh, well, the neutron emitters are. Uh, oh, boy, I gotta go back to my uh, uh, isotopic. <clears throat> Uh, on this one, there are there are some that, that are uh, neutron emitters just spontaneously, and they would uh, decay and uh, give off the neutron, uh, and then they would interact with uh, the fissionable material uh, potentially. But uh, I don't I don't know that that's happening. But I do I do believe the part about it being a hydrogen explosion 
um, yeah. due to the decomposition of a green kitty litter. But, you know, that, that causes a whole bunch of uh, problems. And uh, okay. one of them is that it's a huge dirty bomb. Uh, I want to revisit this uh, question again. and uh, We talked about it before. We now have a war where Iran is getting in to try to protect the holy sites in eastern Iraq. Uh, strange bedfellows were actually allies with Iran trying to stop the ISIS from not only destroying the uh, Iraqi yeah, government. Not really. That's that's the image. That's the, the image, reality is ISIS is <clears throat> funded by us and right, controlled and armed a, by here, us. Here's the danger. The Israelis, because we gave them long-range bank tanker bombers and other equipment, including the GB-54 long-range deep bunker buster nukes, uh, they plan on hitting the Bashar reactor and deep uh, centrifuge sites like the Qum Mountain, the Holy Mountain in Iran, these other sites. Uh, we could have massive clouds of radiation if they strike the Bashir reactor. How bad would it be if they actually hit with high explosives or nukes the Bashir reactor? What would happen? Well, it depends on where they hit. No, I mean, at the very least, it would remove the ability for them to uh, cool the core, and then you have a problem. Uh, I'm talking about the, the core that. completely gone. I'm talking about vaporize the entire site, turn to oh, an well, atomic then, vapor. You mean aerosolize? Aerosolized, Bashir is now aerosolized. It is now no longer a physical structure. It is now between here and the cosmos. Well, well, I'll tell you what. That that would be that would be the worst possible case because there would be no way to, uh, you know, attenuate or or, or yeah. temper that. Well, there would be a plume of death that would stretch to China. Right. Well, our our physicians for social responsibility have calculated that if that happened that the amount of radiation would spread across Myanmar because it's directly downwind. It would go across southern China, which is the primary dragon cities that make all the industrial work. Not North China. It would cross South Korea, Japan, and would head directly toward America. We'd have a giant plume of radiation on top of Fukushima heading toward us. So these morons don't understand if you start a nuclear war there, and again, it won't just be a one-way deal. Uh, Russia is going to use nukes too. They'll nuke uh, Israel. They'll nuke uh, some of these other Islamic cities like Saudi Arabia. In fact, the dialogue going between uh, Mr. Putin, who they now call Tsar Putin, which I think is ridiculous, uh, and the uh, the king of Saudi Arabia, is he told them that he would nuke Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, after the nasty comments by the king of Saudi Arabia against Russia. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia was threatening Russia, and that's not a wise thing to do. Russia is not... These are people you don't mess with. So... Uh, they're not being treated with respect, and again, we need to treat them with respect. They want to make a business deal. They want to be treated with respect. And instead of treating them like, again, in a Christian way, strength, through, strength but verify, you know, whether it's nuclear weapons or other things, we could, uh, out of strength, have a deal with the Russians and the Chinese, stop industrial espionage, pro properly set up uh, tariffs to protect our industry, and at the same time, help to build up their countries and have some interlocking exchange systems so we don't have massive debt blow our world economy to pieces. But all the pieces are in place to blow it apart this fall for this summer or fall to have a big war. Uh, in the Dr. East. Bell, you're totally right. The